Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Saturday, the weekend upon us, March 25th, 2023. It's about 1.41 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the latest earthquake shows a 1.0 into the California region here along the West Coast. Also a 2.2 over here around the Turkey region. Notice a broad area of earthquake activity ramping up here from uh, the middle Mediterranean region all the way to the east here around the, uh, the uh, Middle East area. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the map. A lot of this newer movement is missing here across the area uh, that is shown up here on the Earthquake 3D globe here with a couple upper fours just to the southeast here of Turkey. Go ahead and pull up the EMSC model and get a, a specific location for this earthquake. It looks like the uh, 4.9 coming in just a short time ago, the Iran-Iraq border region. Uh, although source parameters have not yet been reviewed by a seismologist, so um, possibly some of these quakes could be downgraded, upgraded, depending on what they want to do once they review them. Either way, a noticeable uptick in the area uh, for earthquake activity today. Also here in the northern end of the, uh, well, well north of the Java Trench into the Myanmar area, showing some activity as well. This is kind of our watch zone for some potential movement. We did see a 4.3 coming in. Uh, earlier today, listed by the USGS in the Myanmar area, uh, this area does see quite a bit of earthquake activity historically, uh, and some large ones at that. Uh, it's been awfully quiet here for, oh, a little while, roughly about the northern end of the Java Trench, uh, northward here, up around the Myanmar area and through the Himalayas. It's all been pretty quiet. Uh, looks as though things may be starting to fill in slightly uh, in that location. Also getting a pretty good cluster of earthquakes again around the Indonesia area and the Philippines all starting to ramp up here um, this afternoon. Some fours and threes across the area around the Maluka Sea and also here around New Guinea. A couple fours uh, coming in here in the last couple hours. We do have one 4.4 up here in our watch zone. That's going to be the Kuril Kamachaka Trench. Doesn't look like the USGS is reporting that earthquake. Um... It is a weekend, but uh, occasionally they fail to um, get these notifications out. So according to the EMSC, CSEM model, the European model out here, showing that 4.4 around the Curl Islands. Coming in, uh, looks like, what was that, 16, 18 UTC time. So 16, 18, oh, about four or five hours or so ago uh, in that area of the Curl Kamachaka Trench. Roughly 20 kilometers deep here into that uh, area of the subduction zone. Uh, a little bit of uptick across Alaska last night and the Aleutian Trench of 1.4 coming in there as we speak now. Let's see what we got here for data up into this region. Uh, I'm not really seeing any major unusual activity. Just your typical uh, plate tectonic, I can't really say a swarm, but... Uh, microquake activity out here along this major subduction zone. The west coast here, Pacific Northwest, things calming down. Again, this it's a weekend though. Uh, so the USGS not really inclined to put too much earthquake activity out there until review uh, come Monday morning uh, once they get uh, a look at all the, se the uh, seismographs and uh, earthquakes that may have hit over the weekend here. We did have a 3.1 though off the coast of Northern California about 10 kilometers deep early this morning, around 2 o'clock in the morning. This is just south here of the plate boundary. you got the Pacific plate here to the south. Uh, north here, of course, you got the Cascadia Megathrust sitting off to the northeast a little bit. But this is a Gorda plate, or uh, as people like to call it, just one whole plate as the Juan de Fuca plate. But there's technically three separate plates here uh, that is being subducted uh, underneath the North American plate. Uh, the rest of California, a little spotty movement across the bay. The creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault still continues to show a little bit of movement. Mostly microquake activity, though, today. Uh, and down south, the San Andreas Fault sleeping for now. Uh, still seeing a little bit of activity here around the Borrego Springs, although not quite as active as we as we seen yesterday. There's a pretty good swarm of movement kicking up here that has since tapered off uh, fairly nicely. You've got one little earthquake north of that swarm at 1.7 and also one earthquake into the San Diego area, 2.1 coming in at 5.2 uh, kilometers deep. Haven't really seen too much earthquake activity out here into the San Diego area recently, but uh, 
they do get some earthquakes on occasion. Uh, the rest of the country here looks fairly quiet far as earthquake activity goes. They did have some unfortunate weather out there in Mississippi last night. Goodness. Um, yes, yeah, some, some dangerous weather. It is that time of year, unfortunately. So got to be uh, prepared the best you can when storms come in and uh, hope for the best. But uh, definitely thoughts and prayers going out there to the folks of Mississippi and the affected areas uh, from the tornado activity last night. All right, uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on here across the area. We do have a couple small microquakes in the last 24 hours. Nothing major, though. This is all very small movement uh, for Yellowstone. Not a whole lot going on there. All right, uh, let's see what else we have. The Puerto Rico area, a couple small quakes around the southwestern edge of the mainland area. Looks like in our swarm region. No unusual activity to chat about here across the area. We do have one earthquake in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that kicked off uh, early this morning, about 6 o'clock, a 4.7 in the divergent boundaries. Uh, let's see what we got here across the Middle America Trench. 4.2 coming in, looks like earlier this morning. Not being noted there on the USGS map. And another smaller quake here uh, down south, looks like off the coast here of uh, Nicaragua area uh, or the uh, El Salvador region. Uh, further down south into the South America region, a couple fours kicking up here into the Prue-Chile Trench today. One earthquake being reported by the USGS at 4.6, but there is some other activity uh, being noted there on the Earthquake 3D Globe with a slight uptick in movement there today. Across the New Zealand area in the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench area, well, the last earthquake shows a 5.0 in the Vanuatu region, 10 kilometers deep. We did see uh, the return of deep earthquake movement kick off yesterday and uh, overnight as well into the Tonga Trench with a couple of those earthquakes down there. Um, close to 500, if not over 500 kilometers deep. Continue to watch this upstream region here uh, for some potential activity. On the uh, Earthquake 3D globe here, looks like that's about it for this area. Um, New Zealand not really showing too much on the map on the map here today. And a look at the earthquakes here across the GeoNet server for New Zealand, 3.2. Looks like North Island, New Zealand a few hours ago. Uh, nothing major going on. There was a few reports from that earthquake. A uh, quick glance here at the earthquake drums here across New Zealand. Uh, shows relatively calm conditions. There's uh, some of that earthquake activity. Uh, that three-pointer that was uh, felt and reported there in North Island. Aside from that, things look, uh, I'm sure, like a beautiful clear day. There in New Zealand, the volcano drums here, also uh, very quiet for the most part. Not seeing any major uptick here around the Mount Tarawera area. As we had noticed last week, things are kind of tapering off here uh, into the weekend, it looks like. All right, uh, Big Island of Hawaii. Have we got any more swarming up here around Mauna Loa? Doesn't look like it. Not a whole lot of activity kicking up here. And no mention here of the... Let's go check it out here real quick. Hazard notification system in regards to the Mauna Loa activity that we've seen a couple days ago. Had a pretty good uptick in earthquake activity out of the blue. Uh, and then it completely stopped out of the blue as well. No mention at all from the USGS here in regards to that activity. Uh, so the, uh, the um, volcano there, Mauna Loa, continues to be uh, quiet. And it looks like it's... Uh, quiet for the most part as well according to the uh, USGS uh, earthquake map all right let's see what else we have here across the region uh, on the earthquake 3d globe again pretty good cluster here across the Indonesia area uh, that is being contributed to all the deeper activity here in the Tonga Trench region the westward general plate movement here folks uh, when we get this deeper activity here into the Tonga Trench notice the plate arrows here the general direction of plate drift, continental drift here, uh, shows the, once we get deeper activity here, there's a couple different things that can take place. Obviously, we continue to build strain upstream uh, for some potential larger quakes here around the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Islands area. Uh, if there's not quite enough built up strain there, there's momentum that builds uh, westward, northwestward here around this area. And that's kind of where we're seeing that movement uh, kick up here today around the Indonesia area and New Guinea. Continue to watch these regions uh, throughout the day today. All right, uh, let's see here. That's about it for earthquake activity. Let's check out the space weather 
activity. A lot calmer today compared to the G4 solar storm conditions we witnessed here a couple days ago, a couple nights ago. Things are pretty mellow. The X-ray flux chart here showing very minimal activity, not a whole lot of popcorn, so to speak, popping up here on the graph. Very minimal sea flare activity at best over the last three days. Uh, there is a bunch of sunspots currently facing us, but they all look relatively stable, don't they? They're they're massive, pretty big, uh, but you got to know what you're looking for here in, turn, in terms of complex structure in the uh, magnetic fields of these sunspots. Um, if I had to say which spot I'd be watching, possibly this region right here in the center may have a little bit of uh, uh, noteworthy... Uh, activity even then though it's very minimal uh, and also a little sunspot up here that's on the northwestern limb of the sun um this one kind of looks like it's grown overnight as well so either way things are still very minimal we're not looking at any uh, major possible possibility of uh, any strong flares currently a 90 percent chance of a c flare m flare at 10 x flare of course down there one percent or less uh, not a whole likelihood of any proton events kicking off either so uh, entering into a little quiet spell, there is a small little coronal hole, 88, that is center disk here of the sun that will be rotating into view, perfectly lined up with the Earth-Sun plane that could uh, create possibly a little bit of stormy conditions here uh, once that sets up and the solar particle and the solar wind arrives here on the Earth probably sometime late next week. Continue to watch that and see how... Uh, that plays out, but for now, things are relatively calm out here uh, across the sun. All right, uh, weather activity uh, getting in onto the... Um, where is my storm prediction center? Here we go. Current day one. This is day one solar we or, uh, weather activity, severe weather potential. Uh, looks like all that activity that was ramping up into the south continues to shift east. Here, uh, as you can see listed on the map, there's only a slight chance, but again, uh, there is p tornado potential. It looks like maybe a 2% chance here across that green area of portions of the southern states. That also includes portions of uh, northern Florida as well. I think the main threat here is going to be either hail or wind, but tornado at 2% chance there, uh, it looks like, for today. Uh, current day two outlook shows a little bit more enhancement stretching back here. Across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama area once again, although this time a little bit further south. Uh, tornado threat is a little bit more elevated there. 5% chance in that brownish, yeah, it's kind of red-brown here on this end. Um, so slightly elevated tornado potential on the day two outlook, uh, which is going to be on Monday. Um no, no, excuse me. Um, day one is uh, today. Day two is going to be on Sunday. Uh, so that's uh, tomorrow. Wind event likely with that as well. And a pretty good chance of hail. Uh, I've seen 10% uh, uh, greater pro probability of 2-inch diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point. So that looks to be the main threat for now. But there is that tornado potential threat there for day two uh, tomorrow. Um, looking out, day three looks uh, like it's a little on the less active side. We're still looking way out here into the future on day six. There's a pretty good setup here, uh, and this is way out there as well. So this is subject to change, but they don't normally issue. The Storm Prediction Center does not normally issue um, a threat like that, 15% threat uh, on day, what is it, day six, day seven, day seven here. Uh, excuse me, day six, uh, for that far out. So this could be turning into something. We continue to watch that, monitor that as it plays out. Um, again, that's going to be day six. We can get a little visual of what's going on out there in terms of um, weather models around day six. That's going to be uh, late next week sometime. And I believe... Uh, the activity in question is going to be associated with this low pressure system here uh, parked over the region, uh, bringing in uh, that setup here. Now, depending on where this low is, um, that's going to play a big part on where the severe weather um, sets up. But as of right now, it looks like maybe central Texas northward in a good portion 
of the Oklahoma area. So we'll continue to watch that and see how that plays out um, for that day. It looks like maybe on um, Thursday night. These night storms are dangerous, uh, you know, regardless uh, day or night still. Um, it's best to be prepared. Listen to the uh, severe weather radio alerts. And, um, yeah, just got to be prepared, folks. That's the best thing you guys can do. And I'm sure you know about it. You don't need some guy from California telling you that. We do get severe weather out here. Uh, but, you know, it's just it's good to mention, good to remind people to check their batteries and their weather radio. And, of course, always uh, pay attention to what's going on with the alerts and the weather setup uh, for days ahead in your area. All right, let's check out the regions out here from, uh, well, the West Coast. Looks like we got more rain coming up here. Pretty good system coming up, a bomb of a cyclone. This is going to develop and rapidly drop in pressure. Maximum looks to be just off the Oregon coast, northern California coastline. Uh, looks like 977, but it still holds. Oh, there's nine. Yeah. Still holds together, though, far as the deep pressure with this low pressure system here. Going to bring in some heavy duty snow on top of the feet and feet of snow we already have up in the mountains. Goodness, <laughs> everything's buried up there. Uh, some very impressive snowfall rates across the higher terrain, roughly probably around 3,000 feet higher. Uh, and for us here in the Sacramento Valley, we got uh, some further rain coming in. Uh, and of course, look at that. That could be some thunderstorms in here on uh, Wednesday. You may have to check that out uh, as that colder air comes in and interacts with the low and um, possibly some thunderstorms on that day. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, it is getting into that time of year for severe weather. Us here in the West Coast, this is our most likelihood of severe weather time frame. Although most of the years I've lived out here, we're already should be in the 70s or 80s. So this has been a rather weird year for us uh, with excessive moisture and snowfall, which is good. I'm not complaining. Uh, but also at the same time, our uh, a little bit of elevated severe weather threat with this type of setup this late in the year for us. Our rainy season, I don't know, most of the time it doesn't extend all the way into April, but looking at the forecast here, uh, April looks pretty wet, uh, at least the first couple weeks here, as uh, the storm track continues to show wet conditions here around the first and second week of April. <laughs> I think I remember this time last year I had a nice suntan, uh, I had the pull out for the kids already, and uh, yeah, now I'm pale as a ghost, and uh, it just it feels like the middle of winter. It kind of feels like November right now. So yeah, looking far ahead into the 9th or 10th, it looks like a pretty good system coming in around the 7th time frame for Southern California. It's going to hit Northern Cal first and then venture on down to Southern Cal to provide some more uh, much-needed precipitation. Awesome. All right. Um, I think that's about it, folks. Um can't think of anything else that may be uh, noteworthy to mention out here. No odd anomalies here with the buoys. I'm not seeing anything in event mode. Sometimes I do like to check these, see what's going on out here, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of anything going on across the buoy world. All right, folks, stay safe. We'll catch you guys back out here tonight. I got a huge essay I got to do. Um,. I got to get that done here very soon. So I'm going to work on that. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight. Take care.